So that's normal for around here. Hi guys, checking in with another episode of Cold Antler Farm. It's nice to see all you antlers on this cold and snow-covered farming day here in upstate New York. I am still soliciting emails from you guys that have videos in them for the big collaborative project I want to put together. By big, I mean like a couple minute music video. But it'll be really cool with the more people that contribute to it. So um, go to the blog or go to the um, link in the description below like the, where you can like click description of video. I'll put information there on how to contribute. It, it literally will take you like, I don't know, two minutes to go to your, like get a, get a short video clip from your um, phone or YouTube and send me the .mov file. Um, that'll be easier for me to use. And you know, then, then when you see the music video, you'll be like, oh, Look, there's our farm. That's us. Cool. And you won't be one of those people who's like, oh, I wish I would have sent that clip, but I didn't because I didn't feel like it. And then you won't be a part of the awesome and you'll be sad in your hearts. And I don't want to do that to you. I don't. I've always liked you. For all of you down in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Mid-Atlantic, New York City, I think you're all getting nailed with a snowstorm. I'm in New York, but I'm really far north. Like... If you look at latitude lines, we're like just south, like latitude wise from like Portland, Maine. New York goes high. <laughs> it goes really north. We're not technically New England, but we're we're bigger. And by bigger, I mean like higher. Well, we are bigger than a lot of those states, but we're also higher, like as far as like um, like latitude lines than a lot of New England states. Like people in Connecticut are like cozy and warm on days where it's negative degrees here. So. Um, yeah, so if you're in that snowstorm, uh, please look at some of my older videos about preparing for blackouts, about basic food storage. I don't talk about prepping all the time here, but I think it's part of just your job as a human being in the world to be responsible for feeding and caring for yourself in an emergency, you know, at least for a couple of days, right? Like, you were all behind me on that, right? So it's really cold here, and so what I'm going to do is run out and get some hay, and I'm going to get some rooster silencers. I'm not. Rooster silencers are just crock pots. I already have a crock pot. And uh, I got a lot of graph design work to do. I'm working on a lot of logos and keeping this farm going best I can, man. I'm working like more jobs than I've ever worked before. I've got this part-time gig with Orvis. I'm doing as much graph design as I can. Please contact me if you want a logo or wedding invitation or whatever it is you need printed. So back to that goat in the house. Here's a story. I was outside with my dogs and I let my dogs in and I didn't latch the door all the way shut so that it clicked so it kind of swung back open and in the time that I went upstairs to my office which has a shut door because there's a little heater in there. Um, I was with Gibson. He was at my feet. I was working. I had um, I was listening to a podcast. I didn't hear the door swing open. Uh, Friday was in her crate asleep. Annie was also in the living room and does not care apparently if a goat walks into the living room. So I don't know how long he was in the house. There wasn't, it could have been that long because I only came down like 20 minutes after I went upstairs and there was, um, I went down to get coffee and there in the living room was a goat. So I got some video and pictures because, because my life is different than most people. Just catch that dog cat chase. Friday, come here. Hey, you want to say hi to the internet? Oh my gosh, how are you so big? Arr, how's you want a girl? Mwah. Say hi, internet. They watched you grow up. They watched you grow up. Yeah, now you're just a big smelly apostle. Mwah. Well, someone's got to chase cats around here. I'm not doing it. So the only thing I really wanted to talk about today was uh, to share some advice um, based on an email I got, which was a family who is very um, not supportive of a reader's dream to farm. And this is something I think a lot of us can relate to. If you're the first person in your family, uh, especially one who's gone through college or any sort of advanced um, education, if you tell them that you want to kind of change career paths and do physical labor, such as agriculture, for a living, it can be insulting, it can be confusing, it can be considered uh, to some people going backwards because 
you know, you've worked so hard for a white collar degree. Why don't you, why don't you want to have that office job in the corner? Um, I, I think arguing with those people or being defensive is just going to make things worse. Trust me, I know this from experience. But if what you want to do is kind of get them on your side, understand like coming out as a farmer is no different than coming out as any other subculture, especially if your family's not okay with it. So if you want to be happy and accepted as an alternative lifestyle such as agriculture in a world where we're told to um, consume as much as you can, be as materialistic as possible, own as many clothing and cars and vacations and, 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 and live a life of extravagance. If you volunteer to be simpler, it's going to be threatening and confusing and downright concerning to some people especially people who grew up in the post-war boom because they went from a life of like their parents um, just getting women in the workforce to landing on the moon and getting microwaves. Like, if you're a baby boomer, you've seen the world change so fast and seeing your kids decide to plant onions is crazy. It's crazy to them. Like, try to understand where they're coming from. So how to deal with it? I guess it's none of their business if you want to start farming. Just start doing it. And when they see that you've added some rabbit hutches and raised beds to the backyard, don't even talk about your desire to quit your job and have a farm someday. Just make them a meal with that food. Offer them a dinner that you've created entirely out of your apartment. You know, herbs that you grew on the windowsill, some homemade pasta you made with your own pasta maker, and a friend's eggs, those chickens down the road. If you have the ability to raise livestock, offer them that. Um, learning to bake your own bread from locally bought wheat. These are things that people can taste and feel and smell and actually understand the value. And when it comes to agriculture, it's all about food. So don't worry about getting them to understand why you want to like get dairy goats in a polytunnel. Let them understand what that food tastes like. Show them the worth. Show them the value of having goat's milk and honey and fresh food and bread in a freezer full of food in a world dealing with blackouts and economic crises and um, people getting you know unemployed. Like any parent can understand the value of seeing a backyard full of food because the most basic maternal instinct of any or paternal instinct of any human being is to make sure that their offspring is fed, clothed, and sheltered. So show them the joy of clothing and sheltering and feeding yourself and um, live the life and be the life you want other people to share in. It's not about selling people or it's not about acceptance either. Some of those things will never happen, but they can come to understand happiness can be many ways acquired. And if they don't understand it, they can understand how good bacon tastes from the pigs you raised. So small steps, uh, live your life and be the life that you want to be. And the happier you are, you, honestly, that's the best marketing campaign in the world for winning people over on your side. If you're happy with your life, other people see that, they want it, they fight for it, they understand it, they respect it. So don't try to get family to understand your farm desires. But Maybe you can make them French toast from your own homemade bread and your chicken's eggs and some great um, organic butter and some awesome cinnamon and some local maple syrup. I'm getting hungry right now. So thanks for watching. I didn't forget about the mead. It'll happen. It's just the time effort and the to-do list of setting up all the stuff to do a how-to video involving food. Food is um, just emotionally intimidating to me right now, but I'll do it as soon as I can. Oh, puppy. I'll do it as soon as I can. All right, this is uh, Two Girls signing off. Jenna and Friday. Bye.